All right, welcome everybody. It's your pilot, Javi, we're at the top. And I am the co-host of Piff Radio. Shout out to Jay Pitt. And of course, we got my guy, my guy, Molson Pictures is in the damn building, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Molson Pictures is in the building. If you guys don't know him, he's absolutely ginormous. Video, <laughs> video director down in Florida, like huge, like top notch. He's the guy. So what's up with you, Molson, brother, man? How you doing, man? What up, yo? What up, what up, what up? I'm good. I'm in LA. Um, kind of catch breath. I've been on the road for two months. I'm in the States shooting music videos and shit, but um, kind of taking a few days at least, you know, try to recoup for a minute, you know? And uh, really quick, I'm a video producer and director, so I lead with my producing. But um, but I'm definitely a director as well. Uh, but uh, you know, doing a lot of these music videos, I'm the producer on a lot of these projects. And um, the producer basically works with you know the record label and the clients, figuring out how much money. People are always scared about talking budgets, right? It's like the the directors don't want to talk money, the creatives. So somebody's got to do it, right? Like who's gonna put a fucking price ticket on these videos, and who's gonna get these directors paid? So they're not shooting in these streets for free. You know what I mean? So right. the producer comes in, he creates the budget. You know, the director has this amazing idea, but the producer has to transfer that to numbers, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That way some somebody has to approve it. They can't just approve an idea without a budget. So, you know, as a producer, my responsibility is creating the budget, getting it approved, dealing with insurance departments, legal departments, you know, and then when we're shooting, I have to hire the crew, you know, uh, get the yachts, per film permits. Uh, you know, if I have to hire cops, what kind of camera are we using? What models, what model agents? There's just so much that goes into producing. Wow. And nobody knows that. Nobody knows Yo, what a lot. video producer is. Bro, that's It's All like they that think the director. Record. That's a lot, Mosin. Well, lot. I don't, I, I know I produce, okay. right? Yeah. Now, yes, the, the directing for me has been creative directing. So contributing okay. to ideas, co-directing on set I've done as well, but I really enjoy the producing, bro. You know, I really love connecting the dots, you know, all that nonsense. So um, it's fun, it's fun for me. All right, so what was your favorite video shoot? Uh, my favorite video shoot? Yeah, that you was at. I really, um, you know, the one that grew me early on in my career was the TK Kravitz Jock Beast Oceans video. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was 300. Um, and then I really enjoyed shooting the, the Cardi B City Girls twerk video <laughs> that looked crazy yeah that was really fun man daps directed that um i was actually production manager on that joint with uh sarah as the producer my friend producer sarah lacombe and um that was a really fun shoot man it was a long ass week of pre-pro and two days of shooting so it was real tiring but it was cool all right all right so as you do know, yesterday was versus, and it was the lots versus Dipset. You know, you know, it, we got we got to talk about it because it's, it's everywhere. Feel me? It was it was really big, I think, for versus, and I loved it. I loved the competition. I think they they both outshined. It did great, um, but you know, of course, the lots came in. Jada Kids came in crazy. <laughs> you know, Jada's just got this like, you know, he's he's just got like this flow that just it's just it's like the python and the freaking sheep at the same time you know what i mean mm -hmm. he's just got this style he's just so venomous but but yet the 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 listener can relate and follow him you see what mm -hmm. i'm saying so he's he's just got this vocal lyrical assassin kind of flow like he's just and he, you know, he's coming out there drunk, like he's drinking backstage. Don't play yourself. That man loves drinking. I, uh, if you go to online, he's got a tape out 
with Fabulous and they go through Mad Records and have a conversation. I forgot what it's called, but if you if you go on Apple Music and you look up a Jada Kid and Fabulous tape, I urge you specifically to watch it. It's really dope. And they talk about certain things that happened at the time of it. It's really cool. But um, I just, uh, I've always been a huge, you know, Lax fan over a diplomat, you know, Dipset, you know, but, you know, I always loved Jules Santana. He dropped a couple of crazy tapes with Wayne that I felt were just crazy, you know, but yo, I just, them songs, man, that them Lax records, everybody just love them. Everybody know them records. Yeah, man. Them records are crazy. But I can't believe you said Joel's over Cameron, though. That, Wilson, that's crazy over Cameron. Yeah, because Joel's, I'm, I'm like, Cam's been great, but he's a little more, his ego's bigger. You know, he's, yeah. but, you know, he's just, he's always been that, like, flossy, big jewel guy. And Joel's, to me, was like the underdog. He's a young guy that, you know what I mean? So right. I saw, and I fuck with Joel's, you know. Not not taking anything away from Cameron's lyrics. He's fantastic and a legend all by himself. But, you know, just being a young teenager, I gravitated to Jewel's, the bandanas. You feel me? He just had this sauce to him that I really fucked with. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Jewel's had everybody wearing the bandanas back in the day. There's man, a couple people, shit. man, that shifted the game. Like, Fabulous was one of them. It's a few of them that shifted the culture with the dress code, Allen Iverson, you know? So speaking of that, how long have you been in the industry, Mosin? Producing uh, five years. I went to film school for for a handful of years. I did a bachelor's and a master's degree. It's like four and a half years. So I knocked that out and then came right into the industry in 2016 when I started my company, April 2016. Man, that's that's huge, bro. Huge accomplishments, bro. Yeah, that's dope. dope. That's super dope, man. Muscle, what up? What up? What up? So I got a question for you. Um, you said you started your company in, in 2016, and you already hit a billion, a billion views. How 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 that feel? <laughs> Funny story. I had a billion views with just Bad Bunny Drake. The, <laughs> the, the, the Mia record. I actually am waiting on 10 plaques. I submitted for all my plaques a month or two ago, two months ago. <laughs> um, but funny story, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about Jordan Peele. And I'm a huge fan of Jordan and his accomplishments but he don't have more views than me. So he was just, I was just <laughs> messing with him. Like I did a billion views on one video, kid. Like, you know, it's um, it's a lot of people watching that, you know? And I've done 250 yes. videos. So you count all them views up too, you know? Um, you know, the Cardi record went platinum. You know, the, I've contributed by shooting these videos to their success. A lot of these streams come from YouTube now. You know what I'm saying? Like you see young boy and all the plaques that he's earning. YouTube this, YouTube that, trending here. Like, you know, a lot of this Spotify, you know, this distribution and these streams that are going on. Now you're getting a huge YouTube since they passed that lock, I think it was last year that they're counting that money as streams. And me managing, I've been managing Will Vicky for two years, who's a huge YouTube and cele- uh, uh, YouTube and TikTok and Instagram star, like, yeah, yeah for two and a half, two years. Now, so. <laughs> That's dope. Yo, yeah, I was, just, I was just downstairs with her. We live, we, we live in the same area. Um, but yeah, man. So just seeing her, even managing her and putting out, we put out seven records in the past 18 months, you know, um, it's cool to see everything counting now. Like, you know, they did the business right and counting the money and the dreams right and paying out the right people. So it's just about how you construct it from the beginning, you know? Yeah. You were so, the producer, et cetera. So with you over a billion, what uh, keeps you, keeps your mindset balanced? And you know what I mean? Not, 
not going off the deep end or getting too, you know, flashy or celebrity like? Uh, I don't know, dog. I just kind of feel like somebody got to have balance in this industry. It's got to be a balance. Like everybody can't be off the wall. Everybody can't, you know, it's just like you got to have um, a frequency as a human being you know, that vibrates at a certain point in your life where you're just not on that. <laughs> you know, I did all that already. For me to go put 50 racks on a chain or go put 50 racks on a house, like, it's just a smarter move to make, you know, is the house. You feel me? For me and a lot of my peers, you see the directors like Drew filmed it, you know, 20K visuals. A lot of these directors that I work with and that I represent, depending on the content that I'm shooting, you know, um, it's it's a brand for them too now. So you go get, you put 30K in your mouth, you go get, you know, 30,000, 50K on a chain, it's marketing yourself at the same time. So I'm not downing it by any means, because it is an industry that people need to market themselves, and we do it in different ways, right? So... I'm not downplaying any of it. I'm just trying to stay in my lane, dog, and just keep keep consistent. That's what's up. I follow. Yeah. Shout out to 20K too. I follow. I follow him on IG. He got some yeah, dope. Got too. Yeah, yeah, 20K. 20K. And it. They they both dope. I like. I I followed Drew. Filmed it for a hot minute. That boy's fire, man. Yeah, so they got. You know, they got a connection with the streets. You feel me? And these artists, they understand them. Um, they know how to communicate with them to get the best performances and to get real organic energy. You know, and there's a few more. You got Louis Knows, uh, who, who, you know, shot a lot of Young Boys content. That's Young Boys' right hand man when it comes to directors. Like Louis Knows, uh, Louis, Studi Louis Knows Studios in LA, you know, and then you got shot by Spencer who was a huge part of Dolph and, you know, his, his whole movement, you know, street, really street savvy, incredible young man. Um, so there's a lot of these young, you know, hitters, Omar, you know, free Omar Jones. I just, mm -hmm. you know, did, did some work with Omar and Uzi. Um, and it's brilliant, you know, the, the, and the, you know what got to be a producer too is fire because I get to work with all these directors I get to coordinate and work with all these labels. I could tell you who the strongest label is. I could tell you who's spending money on their artists. I could tell you who's not, who's going to have a weak fourth quarter because lack of momentum, you know? I could tell you the same with these artists, you know? So being a producer and playing in the game with all these directors, I get to see, you know, how this one creates, how this one communicates, um, how this one does his treatments. And I, and I contribute to them to give them more sauce. You know, I, I add stuff, I suggest stuff, I create with them as much as I can so we can empower each other. Because at the end of the day, what do you want to do is you want to deliver an impactful content to the label and the artist. So, you know, they, they like the work. They like the results. Yeah. All right. So... My question is, because, you know, we, we talked a lot, you know, we talked a lot. I met you on Clubhouse back in the day, Mosin. And, you know, you always been showing me big, big, big support, <laughs> big support since then. So I, I really appreciate you. Actually, shout out to DJ Bleed Dad as well. This is his merch. He made me my own custom shirt. Shout out to my guy, Bleed Dad. Um, he sent me some, too. He sent me, he sent me a package. Yeah, bro. I, I, I seen it. I seen when he made all the customs. He made mine. He made yours. He made he made a couple customs. He showed he showed me most of them that he made. Yeah, I, I really like I really like the hat. I don't know what happened to it. I hit it back like, yo, I need another hat, but I lost the hat that I had. Yeah, it, 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 they'll get you another one. That that you know that that's bleed that he don't care, man. That's mercy to him. So, um, also you know I'm gonna ask you is the travel. You I know you travel all the time. We talked about this all the time. You travel all the time, constantly. You like practically living in, you know, hotels all the time. So what is your favorite spot? Like <coughs> <coughs> there's a spot um 
and Parkland, Florida, <coughs> Parkland, Florida, um, which is on the borderline of Boca okay. and Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. And it's like my, it's kind of like my home that's like away and disconnected. And then if I really want to disconnect, I can come out here to LA and really disconnect. But um, I really enjoy like that middle part of South Florida, you know? Um, mm. Miami's crazy, too much tourists, too much really loud there, traffic, you know? Um, and then one county up is Broward, and then the next county is Palm Beach. So the, the more north you go, the less populated it is, right? Uh, but definitely love going to, you know, Broward County, my home, and just being at different parts that are more serene, you know? So and then, and then LA, I really enjoy coming to LA and disconnecting from the East Coast. <laughs> man, it's always LA, man. It's always LA. It's always. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect you still to stay inside Florida. Would be your first one. Most I, I still didn't expect. I, I thought you would say like somewhere like cold or something. But do you actually? Do you actually? Are you ever in the cold? I don't ever see you do any work in the cold. Not really. I mean, other than going to Atlanta and, you know, New York here and there, you know, yeah. but I I really like locking down in South Florida. I got tons of work there and, you know, my network's crazy there. I got a lot of clients, labels know that I'm there. So they send me, you know, their artist whenever I'm there and shit. So, you know, I, I like when I'm moving, <coughs> I post where I'm at because you know, I got a lot of record labels that follow me, reps, a and r and when they see me in a certain city, they'll pop up, yo, pull up with the studio, or yo. Um, and you have to continue to grow that network, dog. Like, you got to keep active. It's about being active and consistent. So what's your, um, what's your favorite location to produce or direct? To produce or direct, my favorite location? Miami, dog. You know why? Because I can create almost anything I need in Miami other than the snow shit, which who the fuck shooting music videos in the snow? You feel me? I got beaches there. <laughs> I got clubs. I got yachts. I got girls. I got access to all the, like, everything I need. Recording studios. You feel me? Like, shout outs to Cool and Dre. Shout outs to Khaled. Shout outs to, you know, all the people that had created movements there. Slip and Slide, Ted Lucas, my boy owner of Slip and Slide Records, like, you know, there's a lot of my dog, he's, he's managing um, uh, Bobby Fishkill right now. They got a deal with Rock Nation, FSO, De Niro, Kodak, like, rest in peace, XXX, like, Florida's hot. Hot boy, you know, bubbling, Fred O'Bang, all these young hitters, man, spot them, got them. I'm connected to all of these kids, all of them. Every single one that I name, I've been involved in projects or I'm involved in, you know, consulting or I just call them up and I check on the on them like yo you good you, you know that's what's up you know that's what I'm saying up. it's important that's what's up so you so one of the artists that you know I'm gonna talk about is Fredo Bang and that NLE chopper man that video spot that you shot that video yo what motion where would that spot was you know I told you that spot was crazy I love that spot and it's Spanish Monastery in Miami, Google it. Spanish Monastery in Miami. I also shot one of my first videos in my career was with uh, Big Sean, Khaled, Rick Ross, and, and uh, Travis Scott at that location also. It's a whole collab that they did. Uh, so yeah, man, it was the, a Spanish Monastery shot by Jolo, was the director, my boy Jolo. And um, Fredo pulled up and them boys basically ran through the night. It was a nice six hour vibe, maybe seven hours. We jumped around the monastery. We had some fire lighting crews that came out. You know, it was nice, man. It was, I like shooting there. It's real private, you know. I like moving these artists safely also. You know, you want to put them in discreet locations or lockdown facilities, gates. Like, you know, it's hard to move these kids sometimes. Safety is very important. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That, that's that's true, especially, you know, coming from where they all coming from. They all coming from the streets. So, you know, how, how that mentality is. I have to move really safely. A lot of USDA beef in these streets, bro. And work, working with them and moving all of them different ways, you have to be careful, you know? Very dangerous. All right, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, you know what I'm saying, my famous question, my famous question of all time. Um, do you like pineapples on your pizza, Mosin? Yeah, I definitely do like pineapples. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't order it often, but I'm, I'm not opposed to eating it every once in a while if it's there. But I'm a cheese slice guy, 99 cent slice. <laughs> I, I can deal with the cheese slaves, man. You kill me. Y'all kill me with that pineapple on a pizza, man. I, I can't do it, man. My hands are up. I, I man, I can't. I can't, I man. Ain't at it. I ain't at it. So man, uh, one time, go ahead, Jay. So how do you um what's the difference between directing music videos and films? Because I see you do like Kevin Hart films and, and Woody films. Well, Kevin Hart, LOL stuff, my boy Candido uh, directed those projects. He had a couple of series that he did with uh, Kevin Hart and Woody the Great. Yeah. Uh, so. You work with so many people, most of good Lord. Yeah, I mean, it's part of being consistent too, man. We're working on a couple of movies with Kodak right now also. That I had a meeting with him last week and the writer. Uh, for almost two hours, him and Psycho, and we had a great meeting about the two films and the direction of, you know, what we want to do on, as far as content with the movies and soundtracks and stuff. So, we, you know, um, we're wrapping up a couple of the scripts. I, I literally went to sleep last night listening to the writer reading this 120, it was 75-page script, or 70-page script. Um, and then I have my writer, working on version four, I think we're on right now, of a totally different movie that's super fire and that he loves. So I'm very excited about that. But I'm so, so I'm so, I wanna, I wanna polish it up as much as I can while I have the ability and the time to, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. But the difference in a nutshell, man, is, you know, we should a music video, your average music video is 12 hour day, you know? in and out a um, few days of, pre- of prep, maybe a week at the most. And you're talking about filming shit now and uh, you know every page is a minute in a movie. So if you have a 60 page script, it's a 60 minute film, right? So now you have to go into that script, you have to break it down, locations, how many locations, how many talent, what are the props? Are there any hero cars, vehicles, any stunts? You know, it's a lot of shit. Do I have to run permits, um, clearances? Nobody can wear the logos. Any sponsors getting involved, product placements? How many days is it going to take to shoot per location? How long do we need to have each talent here? We have to fly them in. Where are they staying at? Like, it's just a whole nother world. <laughs> Bro, that's great. Crazy. And it's not just one day like a music video. See, for a music video, yeah, they're flying in, staying in a hotel for the night, maybe two when they out, you know? So it's, it's just, it extends everything, basically. It's just a longer project. You're talking about shooting Man, a movie. that. Oh. Shooting a movie that's two hours compared to a two-minute video. Right, that's, that's dope, man. I mean, it's, it seems like it's a, it's a lot, but it seems like you definitely in control of uh, your mental space and what you want to do with um, directing and producing. Like the way you just broke that down, I can tell you definitely got a plan. You know what I mean? For sure. (laughs) For real. For sure. uh, What's the, what's the, the most consistent label that you work with right now? All of them, Sony, Universal, and Warner, all have had me pretty much on fire this whole year. All three majors. Those are the three majors right there. Sony, Universal, Warner. I rocked out with Empire all year last year. I did a bunch of Jackboard videos, you know, and um, did a lot of work with them during 
you know, a lot of the craziness going on and lockdown and unlocking and, you know, it was very difficult, but we got some work done. But as of right now, man, I'm all three majors got me rocking. So did, uh, did things move along, start moving faster once it, once the uh, country opened back up or was it the same? hundred uh, percent. Summers in Miami are crazy uh, every year as far as music videos and talent flying in the hand. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, I was curious to see with our country opening up how this summer would be, you know, and I've been there for almost two months and it's, it's been okay, you know, it's been all right. Uh, but it's, I, I kind of thought it would be a little more lit than it has the past two months, but it's been pretty lit. I ain't gonna tell. So, yeah. So, and it's difficult, man. You know, people are <coughs> conscious about their health. You know, should they get tested for Corona? Should they go get the vaccine? I myself have not been vaccinated yet. However, you know, I've been kind of fighting it. And there's two things that happened last week that uh, contributed to the decision to go get tested. And one is my cousin is a huge doctor. He's a trauma surgeon. And I was on the phone with him. I asked him, I was, he's Donald Trump's doctor when Donald Trump is home in West Palm Beach, Florida. And he's a very huge trauma surgeon and all this stuff. And I have a lot of respect for him. Um, and he, I asked him about the Delta variable that's going on around, you know, that's been newly introduced to us, right? And he told me a few things. And then he said that, he says, where he's like, yo, you need to go get vaccinated and you need to have your family vaccinated and protect your family. And the way he said it kind of struck my, a certain chord. <clears throat> and the second thing is, is I was listening to uh, satellite radio Sway in the morning and he did an interview two days ago. I was driving from Atlanta to Orlando, Florida. And they had a specialist on the vaccine on there. And he said that, 0.001% of people that have been vaccinated, right? 0.001% right. of people that have been vaccinated died, have gotten sick, have had rejection. It's a very small percentage. And those people are the ones that are most safe, are the ones that are vaccinated. So I listened to this way thing for two hours, but that's pretty much what the message was. So those two things kind of, you know, so it is what it is, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. You see New York ain't letting people eat in restaurants or- Oh man, that's crazy, man. Can't eat, can't do no more indoor activities without, you have to actually go get, um, you have to actually go get the shot now. They're mandating it by law. So it's getting crazy, man. Hopefully it doesn't get like that everywhere but yeah most i see what you're talking about that's definitely getting a little you know definitely getting a little crazy Perhaps. yeah they they offering a hundred dollars out here to get the, the vaccine yeah <laughs> i heard i heard they're offering the the, the the homies the homies in prison honey buns <laughs> <laughs> that's I'll crazy i mean think about it though would you rather be vaccinated and protected or would you rather be you know out here screaming, I'm not getting poked by this stuff or I'm not doing it and putting ourselves at risk. It's really the truth, but we're being ignorant, you know, because right. I don't, I don't want to stick myself with shit either. I'm going to keep it real. I've been saying that shit for, since this shit started, this vaccinated shit. But I mean, the truth is, is, you know, that shit prevents it and it's documented. So, you know, to each his own. Right. Definitely for sure. So let me see. I see. Um, look like he froze. Okay, I thought he froze up. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> you um you you do interviews too as well? Yeah, I did. I used to do it more often. Uh, my mixtapes. We used to collaborate. If you guys go to my mixtapes and watch any of the interviews, my website, Creative Minds Firm. You could go to the documentaries I sat down with. Shout out to my mixtapes for that. Uh, uh, Jacquees, uh, Rallo, uh, Lucci. I interviewed Asian Doll. I interviewed uh, uh, Young Dolph. I interviewed uh, P from QC at, at the QC studio in Atlanta. I interviewed OG Parker. Uh, Amari Hardwick is a good friend of mine. And I sat down with him for a couple of hours and had a dope ass interview. So yeah, man, I've definitely, I got experience in that. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's it's super dope. I, I like your content. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really fuck with your content for real. Man, most is the most humble guy ever, man. Like super humble on top of that. Like ever since I've been tapped in with him, he's always showed love. He, he's never on nothing funny. Like he likes, he be commenting on my stuff. Like, yo, look, most of commented on my stuff, bro. Like that's <laughs> Like, that's so dope, man. Like, we definitely appreciate you, Mosa. We definitely you coming on to Piff Radio. Um, Thank you, it, dog. Um, sure. before, before we do have you go, though, we definitely do need you to, um, you know, shout out your um, social media before you do go. Yo, man, I appreciate you guys. My social media is Mosa Pictures. My website, creativemindsfirm.com. That's really it, bro. Hey. Hi. Hey, y'all heard it, man. CreativeMindsFirm.com, man. I need everybody to tap in, man. CreativeMindsFirm.com. I got y'all. Man. Tap yeah, into my a- pictures, man. For real. Hey, before you go, let us get a drop real quick for Fifth Radio. Whatever you want to so, say. Yo, this your boy Motion Pictures, and I'm out here with my boy Jay and my boy Javi, and we on Piff Radio. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's hey, get it. appreciate you, my G. Yo, appreciate you, dog. Yo, Where all love. All love. Appreciate you, bro. You know we stay tapped in, bro. All yes, love. Sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate no you. All right. Oh, man. Hey. I, ran out of to say. I ran out of things to say. I went on to like nine questions, but I ran out of things to say. Yeah, yeah, but hey, guess what? You said you wanted to stretch it out. <laughs> Hey, you said you that too. You ready for that, bro? You ready as fuck? You ready? For you that. said you said you wanted to stretch it out, and and you ain't asked about clubhouse. What do you mean? You said you was gonna ask him about clubhouse in the text message. Oh, I did. I didn't ask him at all. Oh, uh. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he, was, he was in my bachelor room. And he was in my bachelor room and stuff like that. Him, Keontae, and all of that. Like they supported my like, like the biggest, the biggest black moderators in that time frame in my room. It was crazy. I'm like, bro, why you all in here to support? It was like it was them, and then like Tia came in for a little while. It was dope. Like it was like soup, yo. They gave me, yo, they gave me bread. <laughs> <laughs> it was dope, bro. Hey, bye. That was dope. Hold on, let me stop the recording because.